You spend the next several hours experimenting with the virtual jet mecha. The control seems stiff and the body is more sluggish than you're used to, likely due to the simulated wet weight of Jet's box. You tell Jet to try and increase the power to the joint motors a few times, but it doesn't help much. You tell yourself to inform Alex afterwards. You two seem to be do doing reasonably well. Let's see how well you can perform under pressure, shall we? Under pressure. Pushing down on me. Anyways. <laughs> the small handful of fake alien robots that you were using as target practice disappear and are replaced with five fake looking teleporters in a circle with a large black box connecting them in the middle. The fuck is this? You figure it out. The teleporters fire up with an unrealistic looking green energy and alien robots immediately begin swarming out of them and opening fire on virtual jet. It looks like something out of Evangelion. You pull back on the controls to get yourself at an altitude advantage while Jet's defensive capabilities go into overdrive. Jet stands firm as the waves upon waves of bullets bounce off of it harmlessly. Uh, uh, what was I? God, what was I going to say? I completely just blanked out. I don't remember. Jet stands firm as the waves upon waves of bullets bounce off of it harmlessly. It'd be easy to destroy the teleporters, but you'd have to uh, get through the enormous swarm of alien robots. What do we do? If I surrender to the aliens, can I pilot one of those? I'm pretty sure they'll just kill you. <laughs> Call it a hunch. Oh man, do we find a weakness or do we dive in? Hmm. In times like this, I think to Danny Sexbang for words of encouragement. Fuck it. <laughs> you fire the boosters to launch yourself into the air and then immediately kill them as the momentum carries you to the apex of your leap. As you slowly begin descending again, you spin Jet's body around and use the circular momentum to throw the spear directly downward, impaling the core neatly. But the power still flows through the teleporters, and so Jet slowly begins to descend again. You pull out the oversized ball pin hammer and grip it in both hands tightly. <laughs> um, partner, are you sure about... <laughs> you answer Jet with only a loud, echoing primal roar as you fall like a meteorite onto the core, bullets ricocheting off of you like they're nothing. <laughs> dive in or on the fuck it option. I click dive in. I didn't want to actually say fuck it, because I'm pretty sure that'll that'll just like... You know, fuck off with the whole thing. But I wanted, like, a fuck strategy. Let's not do the uh, weakness bullshit. Let's just... <laughs> we need a plan of an attack. I have a plan. Attack. The hammer strikes the spear true, driving it straight through the core and into the fake gray earth as the core explodes in green fire, which flickers off of Jet's body as it stands up straight. The fire quickly disappears. Disappears. You step out of the pod, holding your arms wide as you as you grandstand. The me mechanics seem genuinely impressed. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I only deserve most of your applause for solving your puzzle. Thank you. <laughs> now do you get it? You couldn't have done that without Jet's AI. You know that. Maybe. They also couldn't have done it with uh they couldn't have done it without me, right? Badass standing in front of you. Why do I feel like I'm role-playing as fucking Star-Lord? <laughs> yeah, that's how partnerships work. Looks like you've remembered that. Now don't trip over your huge dick. We've still got more training tomorrow. You take a big, dumb, dramatic bow, bow and excuse yourself from the barracks. I'm gonna save here just for good measure. There we go. Mecha Pilot Gill. <laughs> that that makes a lot more sense. Alright, make sure it's saved. Alright. You see it again. The figures haunt the figures haunted your dreams for so long, but for some reason. Uh playing as older Shinji. Older Shinji is a Older Shinji is a bitch. <laughs> According to Hollow Atraxia, him and Zoken are just absolute bitches to Sakura, who took over uh, the Malto family. Also, I'm not that much of a dick. Uh, let's see. For some reason. It doesn't make you angry now. You hear it speak, but can't figure it out as it seems to fade away. You don't want it to. Not now. Not... 
not know that you have questions. Can it hear you? Wrong, Shinji. Oh. 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 Yeah, I've never seen Evangelion. I, I can't judge Shinji's personality. I just know the I just know the phrase of Shinji getting the robot. That's all I know. Also, thermal expansion. <laughs> Those are like the only things I picked up from like the one episode of Evangelion I watched, and that was it. I don't know anything else about that series, except for its theme song, which is pretty catchy. Anyways, day two. Alarm. You wake up and dress yourself again before heading out to the hangar. Not before you see the light blinking, however, indicating that you have more messages. Eh, sure, I'll check them. You see only a few messages this time. Another message from Jet saying that they're excited to do some 3D maneuvering and training today. Another message from the Admiral telling you not to sleep in. Another unsigned message with no body. This time the subject says, BEND IT. You make a mental note to ask someone what's up with those and then delete all three before heading out. Hello, Lieutenant. I'm excited for today's training. Since we're most likely going to fight the aliens in space, we're going to train in orbital flight. I'm excited. Have you ever been to space four before? Yeah, Shinji is the main character, I think, of Evangelion. He's the whiny little bitchy kid. Yeah, I figured you were talking about the fate one. This is confusing. <laughs> With way too many men. I feel like the Shinji from uh, Evangelion is more appropriate here since I am in a giant robot. Alright. Nope, never had the opportunity. You don't bother explaining why leaving base in a mecha is practically a death wish, much less leaving atmosphere. Earth is below you and some kind of space station is uh, in front of you. A large metal donut rotating in place with a long spire intersecting the middle. Surrounding it are a large yet, inf yet finite amount of alien robots painted black. Luckily, Jet highlights all of them with a glowing outline, removing any visual disadvantage they would have. Alright, this one's pretty easy. Kill them all, don't let the station breach. <laughs> Do you have any space sta- Do we even have any space stations? That's not the point. Complete the mission. Roger. <laughs> Roger. What's the plan, Lieutenant? You consider your options for a moment. Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna really ask for help on this one. Should we cover the station or use the Z-axis to our advantage? <laughs> Obviously, telling, uh... Telling Jet to figure it out is obviously not a good option to take. We oh, there we go. Well, I say that in, me, in a sort of, like, literal sense. Uh, well, first of all, Hollow Atraxia is not actually a sequel, so it's kind of weird that way, because all the servants are still alive. The access looks smart, so cover the station. All right, can do. But yeah, in Hollow Atraxia, Sakura becomes the head leader of the uh, Mauto household, uh, basically terrifying Zoken and Shinji. We gotta stand between them and the station. Since they surround the station, you gotta let me know when one that I can't see gets too close. Got it? Roger. You hit the enemy broadcast button and a small light blinks on, indicating that you're now linked into the audio channels of all the alien robots. Virtual Jet flies down to intercept the largest group of robots, which stops them right in their tracks as they stare at you. You hold Jet's spear in an outstretched arm and let go. It stays in place as things in outer space tend to do. You then grip the hammer tightly and point at one of the alien robots before beckoning for it. You first. The robot jets out of the group directly at you, which you greet with a powerful Major League swing to the gut. The robot practically splits in half, and it careens into outer space. <laughs> Opening day, motherfuckers! 
The group explodes into a flurry of activity, bum-rushing you in the hopes of overwhelm overwhelming you. You meet each of them in turn, a hammer here, an elbow there, a spear through a couple of chests, and more than a few spinning lariats. Because, why not? So many anyways that I can see this scene happening. <laughs> uh, this one, this, this officially needs either a manga or anime adaptation. Someone get on that. You lose yourself in the violence, enjoying every moment before Jet interrupts you. Lieutenant, check your six, behind the station. You immediately respond by grabbing both of the weapons and launching yourself with a powerful kick off an alien robot's chest. Virtual Jet's body flies towards the tip of the station's spire, which you use to alter your course directly into three robots swarming the other side of the station. The spire bends under your weight. Um, ignore it, keep it up! Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, no wait, that was Alex. You catch all three of the robots at once, the middle between Virtual Jet's legs and the other in both armpits. <laughs> You squeeze all three of them as hard as you can, but can't seem to destroy them with just the strength of the joint monitors. Yeah. Jet, strengthen the armor and start firing the side and bottom thrusters. Full blast! Roger. Virtual Jet's thrusters light up the robots, their armor glowing white hot as they suddenly begin to as they subtly begin to wrap and melt under the heat and pressure. My guy would beat the shit out of Shinji. Who the hell are you kidding? <laughs> Why won't you just die? And with a sudden burst of unseen strength, all three of the alien robots' heads pop off, their molten necks trailing metal behind them. You breathe heavily, virtual jet almost mirroring your, ch mirroring your chest movements. That felt good. I know, right? After such an impressive display... Kind of feel a bit exhausted, even though the fight lasted less than an hour. But since she posts uh, both, but since you both passed with such flying colors, Alex agrees to just let you rest for the rest of the day while Jet studies the replay. I'm super confused because my name was still up there. That night, you vaguely see the messaging light turning on before you collapse into bed. You just ignore it. It'll probably still be there in the morning. Did I join in on the sex scene yet? Nah, there's no sex scene, unfortunately, trolling. You missed me doing pretty cool anime shit and blowing shit up. How many days did it say I was going to be training with the robot? Five? I want to kind of... I want to try and finish this game before we move on. Uh, tonight, you try and take a peaceful approach to the figure in the farm. You sit down. You don't move. You don't say anything. You don't try and think. You just sit down. Eventually, the figure sits down, too. It's actually kind of nice. Still learning to kill and shit. This isn't good. Who cares about explosion? I want to fuck a robot. Day three. Getting up is never easier, though. You've got some more messages. Yeah, I'll check them. Two this time. One from Jet and an unsigned one. Jet's decided to do some tight quarters training today. While the unsigned one just says, destroy the wall. You delete both of them. Huh. The monitor is in the pod dim, simulating darkness in the virtual space that's loading in. It's a stark metal corridor, like the ones in the base except much larger. You hit the comms. Fighting in the base? Kind of pessimistic, don't you think? Well, this isn't supposed to be the base. It's supposed to be inside of an alien structure. But, uh, uh, but nobody knows what that would look like, so... Let's see, I don't got a problem getting up. <laughs> Michael Bay cares about explosions. Also, hi... Geodice, 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 uh, your name is hard to pronounce. I'm just going to call you Dice. <laughs> I'll suspend my disbelief just this once. Jet chimes in, a chipper tone in their voice. And I will as well. What's the mission this time? The corridor remains dim while a large computer console-like device materializes behind you. Almost all the warriors here. Are, are, almost all the warriors are here today. That's the power of Mech Romancer. Mech Romancer. Eh, close enough. <laughs> Words are hard. You should come to expect that by now. <laughs> the corridor remains dim while a large computer console-like device materializes behind you. The display on it reads zero zero percent. 
That percentage will count up, and once it reaches 100%, you win. Alien robots will attack you and the consoles, so protect it at all costs. Oh, hey! When did I start playing Payday? <laughs> Should be easy as cake for you. Dice is related to Duke Devlin. Yu-Gi-Oh reference. No one gets. I get that reference. <laughs> I get that reference. Actually, I think quite a few people here play Yu-Gi-Oh and know who Duke is. <sighs> Anyways, um, let's see. <laughs> A large door on the other end of the corridor opens up and a platoon of robots swarm in, weapons at the ready. You study the environment and this seems about as simple as it can get. Jet seems extra excitable today. Roger that, Lieutenant. Any game plans? It's clear to you. Uh, so what's this about fucking a robot? Welcome to Mech Romance. Romancer. Where I literally have to become <clears throat> partners with a robot that learns. I don't remember Duke. I remember Duke. I had the. I actually bought that VHS with the uh, Dungeon Dice Monsters. Um, got a while back, but I think my VHS player actually destroyed it. Regrettably, or it might still be downstairs. Uh, though I must admit, I don't remember what Duke sounds like, because all I can think of is the abridged version of Duke. <laughs> Who just has Justin Timberlake's bringing sexy back every time he talks. VHS, what are you, a dinosaur? Dude, I have a lot of VHS tapes. I have so many, like, old cartoons and old shit, like, recorded from when I was a kid on VHSs, and I love them. It's the reason why I know so many old fucking commercials. All right. So, Mecca Elizabeth. Kind of, except I think it's a dude. I think we went with the dude option. Because <laughs> the other one was supposed to be, like, sleek like a jet, so I imagine that one would have been, like, the female model. But, eh, you know. Alright, let's give ourselves a little breathing room. You take Jet's hammer and smash it into the wall behind the console with all the force allowed to it. It creates a massive dent and successive... Attacks make the dent go deeper and deeper until the entire wall is concave. <laughs> Damn it, why the hell- what the hell is with this metal? Break open already! I have a dual disc, I'm trying to collect them all. I got the dual city, or a calcos, think I'm missing one. I think those are the only two that were made. At least they're the only ones I remember. I still have my old dual disc, it's still downstairs. I don't think it fits my arm anymore because I'm a fat because I'm a fatty. It's a problem I have with wearing any of the common rider shit. It's like this is meant for a young Asian boy's hand, not a fat American hand. <laughs> Bolts from the swarming robots ricochet off of Jet's back as you attack the wall, but the AI still takes the time to ask, Lieutenant. I like smashing things as much as much as you do, but is this what we should be smashing? You answer with one final full-bodied swing that finally breaks through the virtual wall, which opens into an empty black space. The atmosphere is sucked out of the corridor along with Jet and the console, which rips out from the ground as you hold onto it tightly. You plummet into the empty space and lean back in the pod's chair with a smug look on your face. <laughs> they can't get us or the console. We're out here, suckers! Check the console, smartass. You turn it around to face Jet's cameras and see that the console's monitor is completely broken with sparks shooting out of it. <laughs> Mission failed, starting it over. <laughs> you run the exercise over and over for the rest of the day, eventually getting the console to 100% just before dinner time. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> I tried. The field's becoming fuzzy. You see the figure, probably, but everything is disappearing from view, like it's no longer a part of your mind. Goodbye, figure. You have the best night of sleep you've had in your life, or at the very least, in the last year or so. <laughs> Dual monsters will never be the same. Day four.
The bass is collapsing and violently raises you from your sleep, and you can barely gather your thoughts as a page bangs on your door. Lieutenant, the entire base is needed in the headquarters. It's an emergency. You gather enough energy to get up and put a uniform on. Now I'll check them. You have no messages. Wait. No, one just came in. It's another anonymous one that says, let it shoot. You delete it and run out into the hallway. A levitating tram slides to a stop in front of the barracks as you open the door and move past the page. It must be carrying at least 20 people, none of whom you recognize. They're dressed mostly in pages or mechanics outfits, although some are wearing uniforms you don't recognize. Wait, how long have you had one of those? Since forever. Jump on already. We're in a hurry. Oculus Rift for an online Yu-Gi-Oh game? That would actually be pretty sweet. I still don't think it'd be worth paying for an Oculus Rift, but it'd be cool. You board the tram and sit awkwardly as the tram travels all the way to the headquarters. At some point in the trip, the Klaxion shuts off. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Once you arrive, you shuttle into a crowd that contains at least four times as many people as you thought were stationed here. Some not even wearing uniforms. On every single one of the monitors, a distant speck uh, moves slowly from right to left. A bright light shines, and then the video repeats itself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you see on the monitors is the last transmission from the stealth astronomical reconnaissance ship Higgins, which was, until recently, operating out in the Atlantic. Pause the recording and blow it up on screen, please. The monitor zooms in. Track it in slow motion. One of the large bulbs on the thing's back opens up, revealing an enormous metal tube. An energy inside begins to charge before turning to face directly into the camera and fires. There's no record of this ship in any of our files, but you can probably tell just by looking at it that's definitely a product of the alien menace. All we do here is break the fourth wall. <laughs> We believe that this is a larger version of the glassing ships that surgically destroyed the major cities during the first invasion. Research, have you tracked the ship with our own systems? Someone in the crowd responds. Yes, ma'am. We did the best we could without revealing our telescopes. It's definitely heading for Earth, and we believe that it will be here within the next four days. Although the more information we get, the more we narrow this down. It's entirely likely that it will arrive within 24 hours. I see. Thank you. It would be safe to assume that this is just a new ship that they use for use for resupply of the occupying forces, and that has just managed to snipe the Higgins, so we should... The same voice as before interrupts her. Oh, uh, ma'am, if I may, we have some more information that is probably pertinent. Um, the North America occupying forces, they've all left this morning, ma'am. Upon hearing this, crowd interrupts into a scared murmur. People begin to shift around, looking at each other nervously. The Admiral looks shocked for a moment, but regains her composure in a flash. I'd love it if the game that they made, they play on those tower things. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. I want your entire department to monitor the new ship closely, which we will now refer to as, the dr as a dreadnought. I want your most up-to-the-minute tracking of it. Everyone else, please do your best to assist with jet with the jet project. I will not be allowing any more topside travel to the for the see, for the for the foreseeable future. Everyone is dismissed except for Jet's pilot. Really, I don't even get acknowledged by name. Fuck you. The huge crowd shuffles out of the headquarters, pushing past you as you stand still. Soon, the only people in the room are you, the admiral, and a handful of monitor trackers. The boss steps from down her platform to speak to you eye to eye. As you can probably guess, we're going. We're hurrying along the training for Jet. The man mechanics have informed me that the AI is a very quick learner and has been studying every bite of information it can get its hands on, which is good. I have asked them to prepare a final lesson for Jet based on the information that we have on the Dreadnought, so please spend as much time with it as you can. She places her hand on your shoulder. This is probably the last chance we have. I hope you have been a good teacher and partner. We need it. You are dismissed. I want you to know, we're counting on you. You hop another ride on the tram by yourself, and when you arrive in the hangar, it's teeming with activity. Mechanics of all kinds are running back and forth, working every gantry arm they can get to, practically swarming over Jet's mechanical body. Alex is directing them as best as possible. Ugh. 
Chet's saying that the left ankle monitor is only moving at 98% capacity when rotating inward. If you don't get on that, it'll be your head. Oh, Lieutenant, thank God you're actually here on time for once. Jet sounds like they've been really nervous, and we've replicated the dreadnought as best as we could. Hurry up, we've got a busy day ahead of us. Once you're in the pod, Jet greets you in a shaky tone. You do your best to calm them down. Space! The gray training room forms around you, and the gray is quickly replaced by black with pinpoints of white light, simulating space as best the programmers could on such short notice. My reading motor is monitor. Oh, oops. No, didn't notice. That tends to happen. <laughs> Uh, simulating space is best programmers can on short notice. A virtual dreadnought materializes as well, mostly filling what space is allowed. We're going to have to give it a countdown of five minutes before it fires the glassing cannon, and we're going to spawn robots at regular intervals. If you can do this, we'll make it harder and more complicated. Okay, Lieutenant. How do we start this off? You think. Uh... Man, do we study it from afar, or do we get a close-up look at it? I'm leaning towards up and up close. Uh, there we go. Alright, uh, I guess we'll study it from afar. Jet keeps their distance from the bulbous uh, mass of polygons, swatting away robots as they get close. As you try and figure out a plan of attack, the metal tube representing the cannon clips up out of the ship without a... Uh, I need to see you flipping them off, damn it. <laughs> uh, plan of attack, the metal tube representing the cannon clips up out of the ship without a hatch animating. Hold up, I've got an idea. Swing us underneath the ship. You mean Z. Yeah, sure. Jet swings up underneath, and you get uh, Jet's hands to reach out and hold the ship up. You then fire all of Jet's thrusters in an effort to move the front of the fake dreadnought upwards. It doesn't budge an inch, and you hear the cannon fire. Uh, that was a good idea, but I don't think we've programmed that in yet. It's just a DPS race, currently. We'll restart the whole thing with that in mind, sorry. You and Jet simultaneously take an aspirated sigh and settle in for a very long, very intense day of training. So intense, in fact, that you never notice the passage of day into night and into day again until everyone gets a call into the headquarters. The 24 hours is up. <laughs> we all gonna die. During your last break session, you check, you check in on your messages, and it's flooded with well wishes, and we believe in you, you're the last hope for humanity, and blah, 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 blah. It's the anonymous message that you care about. Let me in, it says. And what's more, this one has a file attached. A file you don't recognize, but a file. Yeah, how about no? Ignore. I don't like those messages. <laughs> You watch the main monitor as the alien dreadnought stops in geosynchronous orbit above the uh, over the base's exact latitude and longitude. It looks like they know where we are. I don't know how they found out, but there it is. They're going to glass up first before they melt the rest of the plant planet's surface. Probably just to uh, prove that they can. It seems that our time has arrived, Lieutenant. I believe Jet is waiting for you in the hangar. Godspeed. Thanks. The mechanics are lined up and salute you as you enter and walk towards Jet. Alex stands at the end between you and the Mecha. Jet's AI is fully loaded into the Mecha, and we've gone over all, uh, all of both of your notes. It should be exactly as it is in the pod, and Jet is ready too. We thought we need a week, but it looks like we got everything we needed just in time. Okay. 
You wave back to everyone and step into Jet's cockpit, which lights up with precision, just like in the pod. Hello, Lieutenant. Hey, Jet, how's it feel? It feels... weird. But it's my body. I am going to use it the best I can. Roger that, Jet. The Admiral comes over comms, much to your surprise. You don't think you've talked to anyone besides Alex and Jet when you've been in the training pod. Lieutenant, your mission is simple. Destroy the alien dreadnought through whatever means necessary. We've never defeated a ship of this size in the history of our of our war with the aliens. Cue in the even galleon opening. I don't I don't remember anymore. Anyways, uh, we've never defeated a ship of this size in the history of our war with the aliens. If we can prove to them that we are capable, that we are dangerous, and that we can fight back, it will give us a great deal of breathing room. Also, our base won't get glassed over, which will be a big plus. Was that a joke? That is a joke, Lieutenant. Roger that, Admiral. All of our topside guns are pointed directly upwards. Once the AI plugs are detached, the gun's uh, camo will open up and open fire, giving you enough breathing room to enter an intercept enter an intercept course with the dreadnought. I have a bad feeling about this. Once again, I'm late to the party. Uh, though, if it was Gil, he'd say that he's never late and that everyone else arrived early. To be fair, you're not... Well, we, we've only been going for about an hour and a half now according to my recording time, but that's also counting, like, this setup and everything. You are cleared for launch in T-10, in T Lieutenant. Roger that, Admiral. Jet, are we ready? Ready. The AI plugs pop off and the hangar door creaks open for the first time in over a year. It's time to get up and go. You and the Mecca shoot straight up into the dark maroon clouds, which swirl and crackle with electricity. Bullets fly past, fly past you, giving you cover against any alien robots that you can't see through the clouds. Once you're past the electric atmosphere and in outer space, the AI makes an adjustment into an intercept orbit with a dreadnought, which is still hundreds of kilometers away. It'll take a moment to reach it, but it'll also take time for it to charge its glassing cannon. Hopefully. Oh yeah, you're here way, way before Heaven's Feel. <laughs> It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, but I'm all out of gum. I am here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, but I'm all out of gum. Might as well just get both quotes out of the way. <laughs> you lean back in your seat in silence, letting Jet handle everything it needs to. You feel like you've uh, like you're going to have to mentally center yourself for this battle. You just don't know if this is a good idea or not. The Dreadnought grows, a terrifying specter of death hanging over the world. It's much, much larger than you thought, at least three times as big as the virtual one, kilometers upon kilometers long. It stretches on and on into the distance, and for a second you wonder if it's me messing, the er messing with the Earth's tides. <laughs> and I'm all out of ass. Wait, what? The thought is quickly interrupted by swarms upon swarms of robots shooting out of every open orifice like a disgusting bloated insect hive reacting to a single invader. Is there just... Oh. Did I accidentally... Okay, yeah. I accidentally clicked that because I thought didn't know it was here. I'm here to kick bubblegum and chew ass. What? <laughs> Are you ready, Lieutenant? Let's go! Ori Sanju! <laughs> it's at moments that like these that you wish you were wearing underwear. <laughs> you pull the joysticks close together and Jet brings both of their forearms to crash together in front of them like a boxer would, providing a shield from the incoming fire. You then hit the throttle, rocketing Jet's massive body into the swarm. They then come out of the other side of the cloud without touching a single robot. Oh, you think you're fancy, huh? Then try one of these! You spin Jet around to face the nearest alien robot and thrust uh, out the spear into their torso. 
It only meets empty space as the robot zips out of the way in the blink of an eye. You pull back the spear and try jabbing it again to the same result. That only makes me hate you more. Jet, record how it moves. You study the alien robot's movements as closely as you pull off a rapid flurry of jabs. How is it moving so quickly? Lieutenant, you gotta take a look at this. The recording comes up in the uh, periphery. Moving at extremely slow motion, the robot seems to start dodging before the spear even starts moving. Oh, please, don't tell me they're th that they're psychic. I don't think so. They seem to begin to dodge out of the way the exact moment my arm begins to move. So they have an absurdly fast reaction speed? Fuck me. Can you react to it? I, I don't think so. I'm sorry. We never trained for this. Shit. Any other ideas then? You hear a loud clank as Jet rustles a bit. One of the monitors points out that a robot has snuck up behind you silently and instantly. You react immediately, spinning Jet's body around with the spear extended, which makes all the robots give you breathing room. Now fuck off! Can't you see we're trying to think here? <laughs> Wait, that's it. I have an idea. Jet rockets toward the dreadnought and collides with the hull, where they stand upright with its spear held outwards. None of the dreadnought's guns can bend down to aim at you, and the alien robots just watch carefully. They can't get near us as long as we swing the spear around. So if we attack the hull with wide swinging attacks, they can't swarm us. Do you know any Kwong Wushu? The fuck is that? Uh, I might have slept through that day in basic training. <laughs> Whatever, just start swinging. <laughs> you do your best to start swinging the spear, copying what you've seen in kung fu movies. A few wide swings, a couple of hard pokes into the hull. It seems to be working pretty well as the hull gets a few scuff marks and dents. And none of the enemy robots touch you. In fact, they can't even get close. Actually, where are they? You look around as you pull the spear up, noticing that the pressed carbon seems to have dulled slightly. Jet, what's happening? The robots are... Uh... They've scattered. No. They're in formation. They form two clouds flanking the dreadnought, keeping very clear of its top and front. Or, front and top. You suddenly see a giant, football-sized hatch slide open on top of the ship. Everybody is kung fu fighting. Anyways. Out of it slides an enormous mechanical tube with wires coming out of every side. The inside of it begins to start glowing. It's the glassing cannon. We didn't slow it down at all. <laughs> Fucking eat this glassing cannon! You fling the spear directly into the cannon, causing your weapon to disintegrate in the ever-growing energy. Shit. Aw, oh, man. High five. Woo! We did it! We stopped! <laughs> your profanity is cut short as the cannon fires at full strength, wiping both you and a large section of the mountain range surrounding your home base from existence. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> well um yeah that was uh phew that 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 happened that happened <laughs> I'm glad we had robot sex in this game. <laughs> yeah, if by robot sex you mean complete annihilation. Yeah, yeah, it was good. 